There we go. Welcome to Third Amendment Reviews. I'm Adam. And I'm Peter. And, um, yeah, so we're, uh, we, we weren't on last week. Um, we were coping with the, uh, election of the, the new God Emperor. Um, oh wait, no, that's not what happened. Uh, people are acting like that's what happened, but it was not what happened. I feel that's like one. people are reacting, like, with more emotion to this than to 9-11. Yeah. That's how it felt. Like, when I was watching the news coverage, um, on NBC, it looked a lot like people were watching some terrible tragedy unfold. Because they were watching, they were showing video of people just sobbing in, like, what's it called? Um in uh at where clinton was gonna do her uh, her victory speech oh yeah and then she just and then she didn't even come out which is kind of a shitty move but yeah I like get it. especially because literally everything said that she would win even the the gop's like polls said she was going to win yeah like i i think if everything was much closer and it was much more like oh like who knows what's gonna happen that i i think we wouldn't be dealing with this right now because it was so much it was like one of the biggest gut punches of I, I what think, actually happened. I think what ended up, well, I think one well, the other thing is, we, uh, we're we not going to talk too much about this. We're going to devote an episode of commentary. Yeah, th- it's just this. hard not to talk about it. Yeah, you can't not address the, the fact that the leader of the free world is Donald Trump. It's just like an orange, or literally an orangutan, just like Bill Maher said. Yeah, like, he, um, he, uh, what's it called? If you are one of the people, and I'm I, I'm with John Stewart on this, not every Trump supporter is a racist. Yes, because that would literally mean fifty percent of the country is a racist. Or forty seven point eight or something like that. Okay, of the something like that. Racist. Close enough. One hundred eleven million people. Yeah. Um, that's what um I remember. Uh, tell him Steve Dave that podcast. Um, yes. O- over like like a year ago when Trump first started running. Uh, Q from Impractical Joker said he would win, and it's because of how annoying, mostly because of how annoying liberal, like super liberals are, yep. and just despite and like just despite them. Well, that's what I think. That's what a lot of people are saying happened is like you go out and you say you you have an entire group of people who feel like they like can't say anything, at them. and and now here you go, they're anonymous, and everyone's like, and the thing is. If you want this to not happen again, stop calling everyone who voted for Trump a racist. But yeah, or they, like I hate I hate the Republican Party personally, yeah. but not because they're racist, just because of how it, like idiotic backward. their policies are. Yeah. yeah, like everything they do is backwards. Well, in some sense, some of them are racist, but I don't believe that all Republican voters are also racist. Like for a lot of people, it just works out that way, and it's especially <laughs> pretty good. Like not that they're racist, like. That they're um, what they believe in, like goes into what Republican Party believes in. But even right. if they shouldn't, even a lot of them shouldn't. It's like, and I don't get it. Like, if you're a poor person that's living in the Midwest, like, why are you voting for a Republican? Like, the Democrats are going to help you, like, be poor a lot more than Republicans are. Well, I think it's just like the the hope for change, and that was that's what a lot of people. Are, that's what that's I think extent. a lot of smart people are saying. Is it like a vote for Hillary? was a vote for three more year, uh, four more years of Obama. Yeah. And Trump was just change. Because these are people who of... the crisis affected in 2008, then they never quite recovered, and now they're like, oh, we're going to continue what we were doing with Obama? Well, that didn't help them. This is oh, this is also not going to, like, I don't, no. <laughs> this is not going to help. <laughs> but they, I understand that they don't get it. No, but um, I also don't. What I don't understand either is why people are like, "Oh, I hope he fails." Like, I don't want him that to means fail. The country, yeah. For me, I now I I still against him. Like, he's. I don't like Trump either. We have we have a presidential elected that's going on trial for rape soon. Yep. Like that would like, I hope he doesn't um like fail because I hate Mike Pence way more than I hate Trump. Like, yeah, Mike Pence, Pence is Pence an actually retarded. Like, yeah. fuck him. Uh, so, yeah. for me, I guess I hope Trump does well. Like, now that he is the president, because that means the country will also do well. Right. But, uh, yeah, I am... Oh, no, I wish this this whole situation was just avoided. Also, the Republicans that are complaining about um, the people, like, protesting need to shut up. Because when Obama won twice, you had, like, the Texas. racist... Like, yeah, you had Texas 
who like a giant chunk of people voted to secede from the union. Uh, you had like people marching around with like nooses, like nooses and like saying, go back to Africa and a lot worse things than just not my president. Yeah, exactly. Um, but on the flip side, if you said that was stupid and you also support California wanting to leave yes. the United States, then you're just an asshole. It's very they, hypocritical on both sides. Exactly. This whole thing is just like a complete disaster. I think the best word to use to describe this presidential election is a shit show. Yes. I did like, even though I know you have uh, other feelings about this, but we can, I guess we can talk about this more in the commentary, but I guess to end this on a lighter note, uh, Samantha B talked about um, the good things that came from the election besides the presidency. And I helped to bring about one of them because I voted for the first Indian woman congressman, well, Indian American congressman in the country. So, well, here, here I, I watched. I watched that clip too. I I like how you said this is a good thing. It's not a. It's not innately a good thing. It's a historic thing. I think she. I forget. She said, the, "This is a great thing. We need more of this." But like, what's this? A bunch of first-term congressmen who we don't know will actually be effective. All of whom were Democrats, yeah. now in a Republican majority, House, Senate, and soon to be, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Supreme Republican. Court. Yeah. So, I, like, great, they're like, okay, it's great, it's historic, that's nice. What are they going to do now? They're in the position. They can still fight. I also think, well, Nancy Pelosi should step down because she's an idiot. She needs to shut the hell up. Like, we need to stop putting old white people in charge of, like, Well, Chuck Schumer's Democratic in party. charge now. Good yeah, old- exactly. Like, I don't understand why they thought this was a good idea. Like, when they're like, oh, yeah, we'll get... Instead of having this, like, super charismatic young black guy running for president, we're going to put this old white woman and make and then hope everyone will, like, follow her. Yeah. Even the old charismatic white guy who was running would have been a better choice. Yeah, because at least Bernie Sanders was, like, different. So that yeah. people like it. It was different enough from Obama. She is the same... She... Came from the Obama administration. She was Secretary of State. What did they expect? But enough about this. We're getting yeah, way off more on the election than we ever wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, because people don't listen to this for the election. They listen for us to say what happened in recent news. And then for us to say, oh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's start out with the, one of the bigger stories in the video game industry. Um, Nintendo released a plug-and-play console last week called the NES Classic that you can plug into your TV and play classic NES games, which supports original NES controllers. Uh, however, much like the Wii, they decided to withhold supply. So now it's creating massive shortages all over the world, and it's in- incredibly high demand for this piece of crap plug-and-play console. Uh, I had a friend that had one of those, like the joystick one. It was I, had, cool. I had the Pac-Man one back in the day. It was like Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. Oh, yeah, like, like yeah, I think it was like the Namco one. Yeah, but, like, I don't understand. If I, I, I understand if you want to do, like, a limited release, and you did, it's just coming out this holiday season, so get it now or don't get it, but we're going to have, like, a fuck ton of them, so if you don't get it, like, you know, there, it's on you then. You had to choose to not get it. But doing this plus having it be a limited release, that's just a dick move at this point. Like, yeah, it's just it's really stupid. Like, it, it would have been, like, it, it, and it's, the thing is, too, it's a great idea for a Christmas gift, because I was considering getting this for my cousins for uh, for Christmas, but, um, what's it called, um, I'm not gonna go out of my way to find this piece of crap for $60. Like, it's a $60 plug-and-play console, I can get a Sega Genesis one for 35 or an mm-hmm. Atari one for 35 with the full library of games, um... But uh, our next uh, video game story, Brazil is getting a new console that nowhere else in the world is getting. Why? Because they never stopped playing the Sega Mega Drive. I don't even know what that is. It was one of the lesser used Sega consoles. um, Oh, wait. Now that I looked at a picture of it, I recognize it. Yeah. Uh, So they got an updated version of the Sega Mega Drive. So... Good for you, Brazil. Um, and in video game news that relates back to us specifically, I got an Xbox One. Um, I didn't have time uh, to make a super cut of every time I railed against the Xbox One over the last yeah. year and a half of this podcast, but I, I've not been very supportive of Microsoft's no. endeavors on the Xbox One. 
but uh, I went to Best Buy and I went, I, I literally went in to buy a 4K Blu-ray player. Um, and then the guy said, well, if you're going to get this for 250 you might as well get an Xbox One that plays 4K Blu-rays and it comes with Battlef Battlefield 1. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I did that, and then I got Real Replay, too. So I've been playing Banjo-Kazooie a lot. So I bought a $350 Banjo-Kazooie machine. Yep. <laughs> um, I don't more... have. I, I, I'm getting a Blu-ray player, though. I, You know what, though? If, if I were in your situation, and I, I would consider getting an Xbox One S... Well, I actually already have the Blu-ray player, so... Oh, okay. Because um, it plays the 4K Blu-ray, but you have a 4K TV anyway. Um, I do not me... have a 4K TV. Apparently I don't no. either, and I'm pissed about that. I definitely don't, because my TV is from 2000, like... Well, no. 13. But you didn't buy one on Amazon that says 4K Ultra HD 120 Hertz, but then my Xbox is like, you got fucked, buddy. And that's not what I actually have, apparently. Um... So, yeah, so, uh, you know what happens a year from today? November 17th, 2017. Yeah, besides it being three days from your birthday next year. <laughs> then, no. Uh, that would be, um, what's it called? Uh, Justice League movie. Comes out. Ah, perfect time for my birthday. Yes, that's coming out next year. Uh, tomorrow... Besides being two days before your birthday, <laughs> is the official release of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Uh, uh, so, I we're gonna talk about that a little bit too. We have we have that on the itinerary for today uh, because we have a bunch of news. We'll get we'll get onto that in a little bit. But I have two Marvel uh, three Marvel stories to cover. Uh, first, this comes from Fox Studios. Uh, they're going to completely redo their X Men universe again. <laughs> Uh, apparently, the next movie they're going to do is Dark Phoenix, which worked so well the first time, and they didn't fix any of the problems that happened the first time either, so, you know, that's going to be stellar. Um, and then we have uh, Deadpool 2, which is rapidly falling apart, because Tim Miller left, now Junkie XL left, um, Ryan Reynolds was like, I don't need them, and here we are. Um, so... The, the new one will be centered around Deadpool. Um, I liked Deadpool the first time I watched it. Wait, they're gonna... Okay, this is not a good idea. Yeah. Deadpool is funny the first time. I would even go so far as to say Deadpool 2 has to be a light formation of the X-Force. In the same way Batman v Superman was a light formation of Justice League. Otherwise, this movie will not do well. Because I cannot take another movie of Deadpool doing self-aware humor. And, look, he's making a fart joke in a superhero movie. Isn't that cool? Ha, 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 ha. Like, and then the entire thing is just a generic superhero movie. Yeah, exactly. This is not a regular superhero movie, but it, it literally is just with the story told out of order. Um, uh, and then from uh, Marvel Studios, we addressed... First of all, I want to address this on this show, but we addressed it briefly when we did Doctor Strange review. What the hell was Marvel thinking with our new logo? Oh, yeah. That's like, that, really I've had time to marinate on that thought, because, like, I, I've let it simmer, and, and, and what the hell? Like, everyone makes fun of Marvel for their logo getting longer and longer, and now you put actual video clips from all of the previous movies into this new, like, why? Who goes into this movie going, oh, I don't know what studio this is. Oh, shit, there's Captain America. Like, <laughs> did we need to see Captain America in the middle of the logo? Um, but yeah, so, um... The, and the, the Hulk, just to remind everyone that they had a movie, like, that the, that was a movie. No, it's not even the Hulk from that, if I remember correctly. I haven't seen Doctor Strange again. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Hulk they show is Hulk versus the Hulkbuster from Age of Ultron. No, I just saw it really fast, just that it was the Hulk. Because, like, I was just, <laughs> I rolled my eyes when it started, and it showed Captain America in the middle of it, I was like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, but, uh, so, uh, other story from Marvel... Studios retain, uh, pertains to Spider-Man. Uh, Tom Holland has revealed that he signed on for three Spider-Man movies total. And so three... Spider-Man's gonna die. What? He's gonna die in the third movie. No, it's just it, it's actually he's got a smaller contract than most other people. Um, like uh, Sebastian Stan signed a nine-picture contract. 
Um, he also has three crossover films, not including Civil War. So that's presumed to be Infinity War, uh, Avengers 4, which is which I think we covered it in the show. Uh, Avengers Infinity War Part 2 is no one called Infinity War Part 2. It's got the title taken away. Now, the one that comes out in two years is just Infinity War. And then it's now it's Untitled Avengers film in 2018. Mm. So, we don't know what's going on there. Um, and then one other movie he's going to be in. Um, also, the first trailer for Spider-Man Homecoming is expected to ship with, um, what's that other show, movie? Uh, Rogue One, a Star Wars story, coming out in December. So that's when we get to see the first trailer for that. Um, now we also have one other big story. Uh, the Inhumans is happening still. <laughs> that was announced to be coming out in 2020 or 2019. Then they said, we're going to hold that off indefinitely. Now we have a concrete release date. It's coming out September of 2017. So next fall, we have the Inhumans. One slight caveat to this, though. The first two episodes of it will be available in IMAX theaters. After that, it will air regularly on ABC alongside Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh my god. So, but... One other thing, this is expected to have a two-way continuity with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as opposed to the one-way continuity that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has, arguably, um, with the mainline continuity. Um, so that's fun, uh, and that's the reason why it's historic. It's the first TV show to premiere in IMAX and then spin off, or go on to continue the show. Um, so that's why that's historic. Um, and then finally, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. We addressed that coming out tomorrow. We, uh, how do you feel about this at this point? Uh, uh, I'm going into it with lower expectations, but I feel like it's just going to annoy me. Yeah. Um, after last week, we, we talked about the, the big casting news. Johnny Depp was cast to play an unnamed role who everyone expects to be Grindelwald. In the next one, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them too. We a lot of also... people are mad about that. Why? Because he might be uh, an abuser of his wife. Oh, shut up. Um, who can... I, uh, and Brad Pitt's going to be nominated for Best Actor this year. Okay? And who knows what's going on there. So you know what? Fuck them both. Um, but... Um, the other big news of who else is slated to appear in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them 2, Dumbledore is also expected to be in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them 2. I have a problem with that, as you probably expect. Because he's gay? No, not because he's gay. Because this is... You're selling me on the next movie with bold promises... This is problem number two we had with The Hobbit. I also don't think Eddie Redman is going to be able to act in this movie. Because he only can act under very extreme circumstances. Like when he plays a woman or plays someone <laughs> with like a handicap disease. We all, I don't know if you've seen Jupiter Ascending, but it is, when he tries to act in that movie, it's very bad. To be fair, it is also directed by the Wachowski sisters, so uh, who knows? Well, they were the Wachowski siblings at that point. Oh, that's or true. Would, yeah. Or now, is it do you always call them the Wachowski sisters? Like when even with the Matrix. I, oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Hmm. I, I, I must like call no them the Wachowski. I call on the Wachowski sisters. I, 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 okay, we're a podcast that gets fifty listeners an episode if we're lucky. So I don't think anyone cares what we call the Wachowskis. Like we can just call them the Wachowskis for all I care. But that either way, be, like, they suck at directing. Yeah, they they had like a couple. No, they had one. They had the Matrix, Reloaded, and Revolutions were both shit, and then everything after that was also bad. Like, okay, I, Reloaded was okay, and it was an acceptable expansion of the lore of the Matrix. Uh, Revolutions was not though. I did not expect. The Matrix to end with a Dragon Ball Z fight. That was disappointing. On like, eight levels. So, 
Um, where were we? Oh, um, but The Hobbit. Do you remember the Hobbit? Like, oh, they're going to have Benedict Cumberbatch to do the motion capture for Sm uh, Smaug, and they're going to, it's like, we're going to be doing this next time, and this. And it's the same problem the X-Men movies have, and Age of Ultron has, and it's always, next time we're going to do something, just accept this. And I feel like, I read a few of the reviews for this movie, and it appears as if it's a lot of moving of the goalposts happened. Like what happened, remember when uh, Ghostbusters came out over the summer, and everyone's like, why was everyone complaining? This pile of shit isn't as bad as everyone thought it was going to be. Like, I don't know, I feel like the fan base will just love this no matter what it is. That's why it's getting good reviews. It's getting, not good reviews, but like, okay reviews. Last, actually, it was at 88 last I checked. Um, but uh, they, this movie is, it, it's going to be, well, it's another Harry Potter movie, so who's going to argue? It's another David Yates-directed Harry Potter movie, too, no less. Um, and it's at 78% right now. Uh, certified Fresh. Edge of 17, by the way, that movie we were talking about um, last week. Uh, yeah. That movie's at 95%. Hmm, good for it. Arrival is in the 80s. Yeah, I want to see... Oh, no, 93. Ah, even better. And boo, a Medea Halloween's at 22%, so always right with the world. Um, but it has, like... They have but beat out everything when it opened. Yeah, I don't know what the hell... Uh, people are stupid. Um... Yeah. Oh, um, and, uh, but yeah, I think, uh, Fantastic Beasts is gonna disappoint me, ultimately. Um, even with my lowered expectations. I uh, feel like it's gonna be fun for people that, like, went really deep into Harry Potter, and, like, will get, like, weird references, but for the average moviegoer, will not, people will not care. Well, you guys read Harry Potter recently, so you'll be able to, you know, go I into that. I feel like I still won't get things that I should be getting. You mean, like, the people on Tumblr who read Harry Potter annually, so that way they can escape into what they think uh, life would be like if they weren't living in the real world? <laughs> or the people that, like, um, you read the actual textbook, right? Yeah, the the one for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Yeah, yeah, like, I didn't, I never read any of the, I just read the main books, and the greatest one of all, um... The, uh, Casual vacancy. No, <laughs> the the, screen, the like screenplay one. Yeah, I've read the all fan. eight of the Harry Potter movies plus Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and Quidditch. Through, Quidditch through the Ages is actually really interesting. Like oh, Hacksaw it, Ridge is also doing well, so I, yeah. I guess Mel Gibson's back. It's weird to say we're in a world where this year we could have both. Uh, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone nominated for lead actor and actress, respectively. And Mel Gibson. Literally six years ago was Amazing Spider-Man 2, and both of them were awful. And Mel Gibson winning Best Director and Donald Trump being president. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, Unironically, though, if if these reviews of Edge of, Seven, Edge of Seventeen are to be reviewed, I actually do think uh, Haley Seinfeld um, could get a, a nomination for best. Maybe, maybe actress. Woody Harrelson for best supporting. I I didn't see anything about him in the reviews, but all the reviews seem to be raving about how she does a great job in the role. Which I don't. It, it's not like it's a role you have to really like lose yourself in because she's like playing a teenage girl, and she's like at most twenty five. So, like, it's not like she has to dig deep in the childhood trauma to find, like, the inspiration for what she was doing, like, six years ago at best. Um, Bleed for this looks awful, though. But we're getting off track. Um, so, uh, this week's movies are, uh, we have Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 1 and Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 2. Um, for me, the movies in the series that perfectly epitomize the problem with the Harry Potter movies as opposed to Pretty, yeah. And it started the fun trend of things getting split into two parts. Right. that That's true. As well. I, forgot, I completely forgot about that, too. Because um, the Hunger Games didn't need to do that. I can't attest to Breaking Dawn needing to do that. Um, I can attest to Divergent really not needing to fucking do that. And now part two is actually going to be a TV movie because it did so poorly at the box office and critically. Um, but the... Do you want to talk about this movie before I, like... Okay. Um, I actually just recently read the this book, the book Deathly Hallows this past year, and I think it is hmm, 
It's, I think it's in my top three of the Harry Potter books. I have to figure out, I had to do a lot of deep searching to figure out which one's my actual favorite, but it's really good. Cause, but I also love backstory. So that's part of why I love it. Yeah. Um, the Deathly Hallows Part One movie, I think, is the worst Harry Potter movie. That it is like it's for me. It's just so boring. Like you could literally skip that and not really lose anything, because the the one important thing that happens is like Dobby dying, and they just kind of pick that up in the second one, so you don't really miss it. Um, like then, not even the Malfoy Mansion part is that cool. Like nothing about this is that good. The second one is uh, very good, I think. I really like the part two of Deathly Hallows. I think that is actually um, a pretty good Harry Potter movie. and it, But it also has the benefit, like, or the, um, I don't know, the benefit of being the last one in the series. So, mm-hmm. like, it, it just gets a little bump from that. But the part with Snape, like, gets that part so good in the seventh book and the seventh movie. It's very well done in the movie. I, I, I just wa- rewatched um, Deathly Hallows Part Two today. Um, I actually finished it like two hours ago. But um, the the best thing about that Snape sequence is the way it's filmed, and it's it's often the way they do any sequence in the Pensieve under, under David Yates. Because mm-hmm. when you especially when you see it in six, they do it the same way, where you kind of just jump from memory to memory as it's necessary. Um, the the, I'm gonna also talk about the book a little bit, um, because right. I, I feel I feel the need to address some of the some of the glaring issues with these movies in terms of continuity. Also come from how they because it's not the book. The book has more time to devote because it's not a two and a half hour limit to devote to explaining how things work. So at the end of the movie, they try to keep the uh, at the end of part two. They try to keep the. Um, the like way it ended in the book similar by having the significance of the elder wand but the problem with that is they never really establish in the movies the significance of the wand that is true and then that was one of the things in cinema since they always point out like they, what's the point of this like why do we care because anyone can pick up anyone's wand and it works fine like in deathly hallows part one harry takes hermione's wand and there's no difference in power yeah that's a big um i remember in the book they make a big point of that because in the the beginning like escape scene um there's like this big thing that happens where like voldemort like can't like attack harry really like there's like a giant fireball thing that happens with their wand uh, what's like oh my I've, there's a name for that i forgot what it yeah. is yeah but it's like that plays into the mystery like through the entire part of the book that they have to figure out like what's actually going on with the wands mm-hmm. so like it, this whole the Elder Wand thing plays into that, and you actually get, like, background about how the wands work. Like, um, what's it called? And then, that that was one thing, but then, like, the books allow you to do, ma- there's no, there's very few words that you can do magic without wands, but apparently everyone can do it in the book, in the movies. Um, the one thing the movie has over the books, in my opinion, because, and correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, the movies as a series never really establish what happened to Neville's parents. That is true. So when Molly kills Bellatrix, it's okay. In the books, however, when Molly kills Bellatrix, it felt a little bit like it was a st- like that was stolen from Neville. That should have been Neville's kill anyway. Well, he got the killed the snake. I don't care. That still should have been Neville's kill. Cause, because, as retribution for torturing his parents. Oh no, they do. Very briefly, in uh, in the fourth movie, when he's when they're in the pensive and he's yelling about how it's like I I know who was involved uh, and gave the information for Bellatrix to torture and um, what's it called uh, the torture and incarcerate or whatever the hell they call it. Of uh, Frank and um, Molly, whatever the hell her name is, Longbottom. I I'm, I haven't watched Goblet of Fire in like years at this point, so it, it's all escaping me. The exact quote by this Eastern European man screaming. So, um, anyway, um, what was the other big problem with it? Um, I, I the other I for me actually I think um, part two is my favorite of the series. 
It is very good. Because a lot of people will say either uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. And I think a lot of that is retrospective because it was directed by Alfonso Corian. And Gary Oldman's in it. Yeah, and Gary Oldman does a great job. The third one is really good. Like, it's, it's rough because there's a lot of really good, like, options. And also, the third Harry Potter movie is, I think, one of my... Is, a, is my favorite time travel movie in terms of its time travel theory. Because it acts, where, yeah. Where it doesn't matter if, like, everything that you've done when you go back in time has already happened. So it doesn't matter what you do while you are back in time. Right. And then you, like, do a good job with tricking you into, like, thinking things are happening. So I think that one is very good. Yeah. Um... And then they, they completely shit on that idea in the fan fiction play um i don't even want to talk about that <laughs> like we don't have to talk about flashpoint anyway um we we've addressed that that's literally just flashpoint yeah. with harry potter here. okay good uh we don't talk about that again then um part one there's a lot of nonsense they padded it with um like harry and hermione fucking which definitely happened no yeah no yes that definitely happened um also and this is the problem more with the series than with these two movies. We're going to do other movies in the series at later dates. Um, we're not just going to, you know, do them all today and call it a day. We're, gonna, we're just going to go in depth on part one, part two. Um, the, the relationship between Ron and Hermione never really gets developed until briefly in part one and then all at <laughs> once in part two. That is also true. Like, and then all of a sudden it's like, and there's like that moment at the end after they win and Harry sees them holding hands and it's just like oh look this is what's always been planned like fucking no all they've been doing for the last eight movies has been at each other's throats trying to kill each other and and now it's like oh isn't that cute I always no. found the relationship between Harry and Ginny strange like that's it never too. felt it never felt right like yeah. the like it's not that's not just in the the movies like also in the books I just felt it was random. Yeah. I was always a fan of Cho Chang. Hmm. Mostly because of her name and how racist it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, they needed someone, some established character to pair Harry up with. He couldn't be paired up with a nobody because it's a young adult book. Or not even a children's book. <laughs> That's, it, would, it would blow people's minds too much. Yeah. Like, he ended up with Parvati at the end, and he'd be like, what the fuck? Oh god, a minority. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that wouldn't sell well in Britain, I don't think. No. Um, yeah, of course he ended up, he ended up with the borderline Irish person. Um, so yeah, so uh, what else do we want to address with this? Uh, um... But, oh, one of the things I noticed about the final fight at the end when he's fighting Voldemort... Uh, there's no music through a lot of it. I didn't notice that when I, now that I remember, it's very quiet, which is cool. Yeah, like, usually you'd have, like, this epic, like, battle theme, but it's just quiet. Um, I don't like how they handled the montage of death. They would, oh yeah, that part is, like, they just, like, glance over real quick and they're like, look at all these dead people. Okay, now we're back. Like, that, that was one of the things in the book, was they, like, each character who died, they devoted time to it. Yeah. Like, even fucker with the camera who died, who was in one movie and then never addressed it, in one scene in one movie and then never addressed again. This might yeah, being an he's integral him, part. Him and his little brother are in the books a lot more, but I'd be happy if they were just in one book and never mentioned again. Yeah, exactly. They, they serve no purpose beyond Chamber of Secrets. And even then, like, come on. You needed to create this character who's just a pain in the ass, like... You could have had anyone just be like, oh, I started the school newspaper... Yeah, Done. like, boom. Done. <laughs> um, no, but, like, they, um, what's it called? They kill off one of the Indian twins. I don't know which one. I don't know if it makes me racist or not, but they never really differentiated which was which at any point I in the series. So. I always like, forget if Fred and George died. Fred died. Okay, it doesn't matter. George lost an ear, Fred died. Um, okay, I always, I always always forget if the one who lost an ear is also the one that died. No, no, no. Two different. Um, which is weird, considering they did a good job pacing the, pacing the deaths in part one. And, like, you, if you go through and you look, it's like, first character that dies in this book, movie, is Hedwig. 
Good old Hensblade. You you know why he died, right? Like what the purpose of his death was. Oh, wasn't it like the show that it's like a serious movie or something like that? It li- like no, the the purpose according to J.K. Rowling was a show that like um to he's symbolize just Harry becoming like becoming an adult and he no longer had this thing that tethered him to being a child. No, it only shows. Oh no, she means business. Anyone can die <laughs> in this movie. I feel like, like it was. She was just like, I can be like George R. R. Martin and, and like indiscriminately kill people. Bird, die, fucker. <laughs> um, then Moody, Moody's death was handled pretty well. Um, that was one. Of, that's actually one of my favorite deaths in the series because um, that's the prophecy. What? Wait, the prophecy. What is the prof- Trelawney's one of Trelawney's pro- uh, prophecies when seven. Come to die in the first horizon. Oh, first yeah, yeah, yeah. Moody was the first. Oh, no. Lupin was doesn't the first one to get a, up. Doesn't it happen a couple times? She Every prophecy she has is right. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing that pisses me off about the books. Well, and it's not, it's not J.K. Rowling. No, no, no. It's the movies that pisses me off. Because the books at least addresses at some point, like, okay, we should listen to this lady more often. And by the way... But we just, like, make fun of her the whole time. Well, the thing is, too, the book that's okay, because the in the books, they say she's a descendant of Cassandra. Cassandra, in Greek mythology, was the woman who was cursed with the ability to see the future, but no one would believe her. Oh, okay. So I'm okay with, in the books, her having that problem. But in the movies, they don't do that, and she's just a joke. Yeah, it's, it's kind of shitty. Yeah. yeah the, I think the worst Harry Potter movies are the one... Besides this one, but the ones where they try to be humorous too much, like the fifth, I think the fifth one makes that mistake a lot. The fifth, fifth is definitely my least favorite. Um, I still, uh, this one I don't like just because of how pointless it is. It is. It's still but a solid for, movie. Like, I, there's just, I just don't like anything about it. Like, it's solid, it's just boring. Yeah, that's true. Which is better than, like, Mockingjay Part 1, where it's not even a good movie. That is also true. Like, um, what's it called? Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to address with the, uh, uh, going back to character deaths. Um, Dobby dying was pointless. I don't understand why Dobby had to die. Like, so we're, we're, uh, we're one and two so far on people dying. And it's also weird how, um, I can do this. What are House elves are like the, one of the most powerful creatures <laughs> of yeah. magic. Um, what was it? Uh, Tonks and Lupin both dying. Don't know why that needed to happen. Um, also another thing, I know this is one of those things been done to death, but if you uh, watch the um, the order that they die, um, the the Marauders die in the reverse order of the name on the map. Oh, I never knew that. Mo- uh, Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs. Because the first one to die was James, then Sirius, then uh, Peter Pettigrew, then um, Lupin. Um, and to be fair, the death of Sirius Black is the best moment in the series, I think. Like, yeah. I, I can't think of any, like, books, books especially. Like, but in the in the games in, in the, the games in the movies it's not as good. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, what else do I want to do? Some other thing I wanted to bring up with this. Um, I forgot what it was. Um, oh, the question that uh, Lupin asked Harry when he arrives at the burrow to see if he actually is Harry is the dumbest question on the planet. Oh yeah, what is it? What was in my what was in the tank in my office when Harry came to visit the first time? And I was like, you expect this fucker who can't do anything right to remember what was in a tank in the back of your office, like at this point four years ago? Like, come on. Like, was there no better question you could ask? Um, and what else? Um, I was. I don't know. I feel like they could have handled the ending better. Like, the battle didn't need to be epic like that. Like, I would have... I know a lot of people wouldn't have been happy with it, but if they just ended the the movie the way they ended the book, with him talking 
to Voldemort, and then they have, like, one exchange, and then it ends. Like, I would have been okay with that. Um, yeah, I, I like the battle at the end. I think they did a good job of, like, it was, like, I felt it was personal, but also vast at the same time. I feel like they could have just done it where they did, like, a wide shot of a bunch of people fighting and not really showing specific things going on with specific characters. But I think they could have did a good job. Yeah, I think I, I think they could have done more. Like, this isn't a movie that needed to, like, be entirely from Harry's perspective. Where we needed, like, they could have spent some time actually showing us characters dying. Instead of, yes, here's a montage of dead people. Like, show us some fighting and dying. So it seems a little bit less like, like, if you, like, you could have told me that, like, the the Indian girl was running away and then a rock fell on her head and she died. Or you could have told me she was fighting Voldemort one on one and I would have no idea which it actually was. Hmm. I like to imagine that she was fighting Voldemort one on one. but like Fred at least we get his death scene. Um we don't get lupins, we don't get tonks, we just find out after the fact that they died. Which is great because it's like when you, when I was reading the books, I remember this. Um when I was like, We're gonna have a kid now, I'm like, they're not gonna live through this. <laughs> like neither of them <laughs> through this for me i think the most annoying thing about this movie and almost the harry potter suits of the whole it are all the people online that say neville is was actually the chosen one because he's fucking not yeah because he, they literally bring up that theory in the book and then dumbledore is just like oh never no he's like actually retarded like he can't be the chosen one <laughs> No, and people are still like, yeah, but it fits him. And I was like, no, because Voldemort chose to kill, like, Harry's parents. And, like, that he, like, prophesized it for Harry, basically. Right, the prophecy... Like, that's why. The prophecy referred to a boy born at the end of... Uh, that's just a quote from Snape. It referred to a boy born at the end of July. So it could have been... It, it, in theory, it could have been Neville. But the part of the prophecy that was important was who does Voldemort decide to try and kill? That's the one who the, the one the prophecy is about, and because he didn't try to kill Neville, it means it's Harry. Yes. Like, and because also, Bellatrix like took care of Neville's parents because he's such a low-ranking character, not even the important bad guy. Like handles him. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, and then one other thing, I think this movie has the biggest ass pull out of like this series has a lot of ass pulls, like to get out of situations. Like, uh, let's just go through them real quick. The Sorcerer's Stone being hidden in the mirror of Ara's eyes that ends up in his pocket. The Sorting Hat can magically materialize a sword that can kill the Basilisk. That one the time I still Turner... don't understand. Like, <laughs> for, like, I reread the books, like, I watched the movie, I don't understand <laughs> how that works. The, um, the Time Turner, which is never referenced again. Like, a turn back time, and, okay, that one they kind of, like, explained. Um, they kind of, they do that well, at least, just they never use it again. The Port Keys, which you know, never get used again. This type being incredibly yeah. useful. Um, but you have to, like, set it up. They're, they're used sometimes. The Veil, again, never used again. That one's cool. Um, and then what was the... Uh, there was one in... Uh, crap, I feel like there was an... Oh, the, the dead bodies. Oh, the zombie things? Yeah. That would be incredibly useful. I think those are in the... They're mentioned more in the last book, like that. There's like they're around the inferior. Yeah, Dumbledore. but the, I think they're they're like at the Battle of Hogwarts, but no one at like those like stone things fight them more than the actual people fight them. Ah, uh, okay. Um, but still, like this one has the worst. Um, first of all, the Resurrection Stone is stupid. All of the Deathly Hallows are stupid. Um, I just want to yeah, address I that. Like, I think it would have been a lot better if the Deathly Hallows were mentioned in the first book. Like, I feel yeah, like it would have. Or if had... they were ever mentioned prior to this point. <laughs> like, that's the worst part. That's like the biggest error for me. Like, if they were mentioned like one of the earlier books, just real quick about like, like when Harry first goes to Ron's house and then Ginny's like reading the Deathly Hallows because it's a children's story. Or, or like. like that... If Better. Professor Binns brought it up in one of the lessons that they were sleeping through, like... 
Yeah, that like there's so many good like it would have made it would have been make it so much cooler, and I feel like I would have forgiven other things because of how cool that was. Like it would have explained a lot, and like it, that's not the point I'm trying to make here, though. The point I'm trying to make is Ron being able to see Parcel Tongue and get into the Chamber <laughs> oh, yeah. of Secrets is the dumbest shit in the entire series. That one does actually. I keep I always forget about that, and even in it's like I saw. I remember I read the book and I saw the movie, and like I remember in the book I just didn't really care, but in the movie it really pissed me off. And I was like, maybe in the book like they explained it a little better, and I wasn't paying attention. So when I read the book, I made sure to pay attention, and they it's it's the the exact same thing. (laughs) Harry Potter didn't sleep. I was just like, what? But you can't like there's no discernible like (laughs) syllable. It's not like he picked up Spanish or something, because like yeah. What? And whenever we see Ron and Harry sleeping, Ron is like always asleep, and Harry's the one that wakes up and looks at Ron like sleeping. So, hmm. and Ron was oh. also r- running away, like for yeah. like four months. Yeah. Um. They um. I'm trying to. Oh, there's something. Oh yeah, the saddest part is that Harry loses his ability to speak Parcel Tongue after him and Voldemort separate. Oh, yeah, you know what? That brings up another point about Cursed Child that I want to talk about real quick. How would his scar burn? No, that's because they... That's a pretty big plot point in in the book. How would that happen? Because the only reason that that happened was because he had the Horcrux inside him, but that got destroyed. The the, the scar isn't self-aware. Wow, that actually is a... Wow, that that book is so bad. (laughs) I don't like. The, I'm pretty sure like the main reason for his scar burning, is because of them changing stuff of back in time, which they shouldn't be able to do in the first place because that's not how the time turner works. Right. Oh my god. Um, but yeah. So how would you rate part one and part two? Um, part one. I know I just like railed against it, but I I still agree it's like a fine movie. So I think part one, I'll give a. I now I'm gonna I'm gonna give a four and a half. Which is almost 50. <laughs> it's almost fifty percent. Uh, part two, I'm going to give an eight. Yeah, I I would go. Um, see, for me with part one, part one isn't a bad movie. It's a bad Harry Potter movie, and it's not the worst Harry Potter movie either, because there are worse. The biggest I, for me, sin... it's worst. The biggest sin this movie has is that you could it, it, it didn't need to happen. But like Order crazy. of the Phoenix needed to happen, but that's a worse movie. Like and, nah. and, and to me, Half Blood Prince also was a worse movie. No, nah, I like Half Blood Prince better. Um Half Blood Prince should have been two parts before uh Deathly Hallow should have. Like but the thing is, too, when I was reading Deathly Hallows, at that point they already announced they were doing a two-part movie, and I could pinpoint where they were going to cut the movie off. And I was right. Yeah, it is pretty um, written with a pretty good stopping point. Right, like, it's not like, it went up, I remember when I read The Hunger Games, you couldn't really pinpoint the point where they were going to cut off um, and make part one, part two. This you very clearly could. Um, that said, I would go part one... Um, 6.5 part 2 um 8.5 mm. um so yeah so do you have anything you want to address before we uh close out for the night uh the king kong trailer came oh well, kong trailer came out and it looks good yeah i i watched it it i'm assuming it's a prequel to godzilla i'm assuming so because it looks like it takes place in like the 60s or earlier well, oh, they 40. have cell phones at one point. Oh wait, never mind then. I don't. I would, I just because I'm thinking of John C. Riley's character. Yeah, I think it was because he was stranded there. Um, he looks funny. I'm ha- I'm excited for it. Um, but the I'm like, uh, also excited for how giant Kong is. Yeah. Well, it's gotta be able and, to fight Godzilla. Yeah, that they did. I think they did that well. But it is funny. My favorite line of the trailer is, "That's Kong. He's king here." Yeah. Because they do the uh, studio or whoever. Like, does not own the rights to the word King Kong, so they can only refer to him as Kong. Nice. Oh my god. <laughs> um. 
and then uh, the Future of Fortune Events trailer came out. I don't understand. <laughs> it Do you literally looks like the... the same. Is it? A, is it going to be a series like? It's a Netflix TV? series. The okay. thing I like about it is it looks like it's not going to have the same issue. My biggest issue with the end of the first Future of Fortune Events movie is the fact that it ends and um, what's it called? Like he gets arrested at the end of the wide window. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. I only and, saw that movie once. And that's where the movie it's, ends. Uh, it's this one appears to be fixing that because um, Dr. Orwell is in it. Dr. Orwell is known for dying in the fourth book. No, oh, yeah, they also show them in the hospital. From the oh, I didn't catch. I only watched the trailer once. I didn't catch where else they showed them. I they, caught, show, they show a lot. Like, I um, think I also saw them in the academy because they had the massive library. Yeah, because they showed him um, dressed as a woman in the like inside of the hospital. Yeah, and that's where he dies, or that's his last appearance is in the 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 man who's neither a man or a woman. His last mm-hmm. appearance is in the um the host the the hostile hospital. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think they're gonna do all of it, but uh, once again, Count Olaf is not the character who he should be. Yeah, and it's. I think the biggest problem is that at least, like, Jim Carrey has to differentiate himself from Jim Carrey. Like, if you... I, I feel like this is something that, like, three months after release, if, if probably less time than that, I'm going to see clips of this on YouTube superimposed with video, uh, with the audio from uh, How I Met Your Mother. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, I actually... I think Jim Carrey did a oh, pretty okay job, but I just don't view Count Olaf that way. No, that's that's the thing. Maybe I have to reread it. Maybe it's just because I was younger. I haven't read these since I read them the first time. Oh, that's what I tried to reread them and I couldn't get through them. It's it's so like what's the word I'm looking for? Like full of itself. Yeah. But look at how I also, smart I am. That's I really loved them when I was younger, but then I like tried to reread them recently and I just I could not get into it. Um. Also, I never envisioned Lemony Snicket as Patrick Warburton. Um, I like I kind of like that. I I envisioned Lemony Snicket more like weird. Yeah, and I never envisioned Mr. Po, Mr. Poe as a black guy, or and Josephine's a black woman. Cause that's who, her aunt. Who uh by the, and by the way these are all like the whitest kids I could find. Um also Aunt Josephine not sure if you recognize the actress. Uh that, she is in Luke Cage and she also uh played the grieving mother um who pulls the picture out in Civil War. Oh, I did not. I thought she was from American Horror Story. No, it's Alfie Woodard. She um she uh she was in a Civil War. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't have high hopes going forward. Um, after to be fair though, from the casting, I didn't have high hopes. Like once they announced that they cast her, uh, Neil Patrick Harris as Count Olaf, I was like, they're they're missing the point again. Yeah, there there were so many better, like more sinister actors too. Who could have Cast. played it with, like, nuance, too. One, an older person? Yeah, why do you have to be, like, 30? Like, um, with old people so Literally, makeup. he is doing an impression of Jim Carrey playing... There, there's um, a scene, like, the Olaf. first thing when we're introduced is the same way we're introduced in the first trailer for the first movie, with the hello, hello, hello. Like, yeah. I felt like, I was like, are they, like, fucking kidding me? Like, why did they bother doing that? Like, but, oh, wait, did I tell you, real quick, I'm going to go into my Netflix conspiracy. Um, if you go on Netflix and go to the ratings of everything that's Netflix, and they all have five stars. Mm-hmm. What's the I don't believe that every Netflix original programming is, like, that everyone gives it five stars. No, but what I believe is um, Netflix prioritizes ratings with people who watch the entire series. And people who watch the entire series are more likely to give it five stars when it comes to binge watching. Ah, uh, it's still a conspiracy. Yeah, it's still not the right way to do it, but whatever. Because I think it's also not fair to include people who give it a one star rating based on the pilot. Yeah, one star ratings are. Well, like, they... I, I think you have to get through at least five episodes before your rating should count for something. Um, but I, I have uh, I have one final review. Um, so Peter, you remember, uh, at this point two years ago when I got Dragon Ball Xenoverse, yeah. one of the many games I screamed at. That was at. a hilarious game to watch you play. Not because it was hard. 
This there were a few levels looked, that were unfair. Like, like uh, my favorite part about it was that the one with um, it was like the chance part of it where yes. you had to like get a certain play a certain character or something like that, and there's only a chance of you playing them. Yeah, let, let, let me let me tell you the process. To, I played as a Saiyan when I did it the first time. The, the process to unlock Super Saiyan, you need to get through the story to get to the parallel quest where you uh, play through helping uh, Frieza kill all of the Z fighters who are on Namek. So you have to kill them all in the right order. Then you have to keep Krillin alive while fighting Goku, while preventing Frieza from killing Krillin. Oh, no, 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 you have to keep Goku alive. See, this is why it's annoying. You keep Goku alive. You have to kill Krillin when Goku's at half health. So Goku will go Super Saiyan. The problem is, Goku only does that like 1 in 10 times. Like, it's a random event as to whether or not it'll trigger the, um, the bonus quest in the mission. Then, you have to kill him, and then you have to, and then it's a random drop, like in an MMO, to get the Super Saiyan ability for your character. Um, they fixed that in Xenoverse 2, which is what I'm going to talk about briefly. Uh, other than that, if you bought Xenoverse 1, do not buy Xenoverse 2. You are going to feel very, very, um, very disappointed. Um, because they added no stages, except for Tree of Might. Like, there's one new stage in this new game. Uh, the new characters were all characters who should have been in the first one to begin with. They added Jamemba from Future Reborn. They added Lord Slug from Lord Slug. They added Turles from Tree of Might. And they added um, the new forms from uh, Resurrection F. So they added Golden Frieza. And they added Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku, and Vegeta. Um, I don't know why they needed to do this game the way they... Oh, and they added in a few characters. Um, if you bought the day one... If you got it day one... You get the day one DLC, and you also get, um, what's it called? Uh, Goku Black, Future Trunks, and a few other characters, um, from Dragon Ball Super. Um, fortunately, they fixed a few errors. The problem with the game is, it's way too easy, because it's incredibly easy to get yourself over-leveled before you do any of the main story, because I hadn't cleared the first main part of the story. The story is broken from the sagas that correspond with the Dragon Ball Z story, so it's like there's a Saiyan, the Frieza... Uh, Android Cell, Majin Buu, uh, God of Destruction, uh, Freeze's Resurrection, and then Bonus, and then uh, Demon, which is just this game's plot. Um, mm -hmm. So I got, I didn't finish the Saiyan Saga, but I was already on level like 60 and had Super Saiyan unlocked. So I just breezed through the entire rest of the game with no problem. Because it's so because it's not even grinding. Because grinding is tedious, and I won't grind if that's what needs to be done. Um, but I will, uh, without issue, um, like, do other bonus missions to fuck around and not to the main story. Which is what they give you plenty of. So you have, like, there's no shortage of, um, oh, go do this instead. Go help protect the guru on Namek. Go fight uh, Vegeta, the train. Go fight with uh, Saiya Man and Saiya Woman. Um... Go feed Majin Buu for some fucking reason. Uh, go fight random people scattered around the world. Go train in the uh, in the school. Um, if you never played uh, Xenoverse, then get this game. Uh, the fighting is pretty like solid. It's just you can basically kill every, um, anyone after level thirty with three combos. Like that's how OP you are at that point. Like three combos mm -hmm. kills anyone. Um, and there's not much to differentiate anyone races. Um, you can, you, you make your own character. Uh, the character roster is lacking, especially compared to games in the past, like Raging Blast and Raging Blast 2. Um, there's no shortage of special moves. Uh, transformations are a little bit lacking. Uh, the humans can only get onto Nimbus, and it's a little bit weird. Um, and there's one other thing I wanted to bring up with this, um... The story is not that great, but it does explain how Bar Bardock ended up on um, Planet Vegeta prior to uh, in episode uh, for episode of Bardock to happen. Um, so overall, I give this game like a five, only because I played the previous game and I felt shortchanged. Um, so yeah. Uh,
I don't think I'll be playing that game. No, you, you're not. You never. <laughs> you weren't a Dragon Ball Z fan to begin with, though. No. I did get season one on Blu-ray, though. Congratulations. For twenty-five bucks, and Walmart fucked up the packaging. <laughs> That's your favorite. I hate it when they do that. I also got Finding Dory for fifteen bucks on Blu-ray. Um, because it's gonna be on sale on Black Friday for ten. Uh, but we, uh, I, I didn't want to wait. Um, not that I didn't want to wait. I, did, I wasn't sure they were going to have stock when it came next Friday. Um, so yeah. Um, so next week we're going to be doing an episode we're recording in advance for Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2. Um, <laughs> then that, that's going to be going up on probably the 20, actually it's going to go up on Thanksgiving, but I'm going to record like the 22nd or something like that. Um, we're going to do Black Friday. Uh, previews as well, like we did last year. Uh, that went over pretty well. Uh, then the week after, we have episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, then The Perfect Storm, then episode 4, A New Hope, and then The Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, for Beware of Spoilers, we have on Saturday, we have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and then we have Rogue One, A Star Wars Story to cap off the year. Uh, myself and Peter will be talking about any others we've seen this year as well in that episode. Uh, so, like, The Witches, if I see Edge of Seventeen, or La La Land, or any of those movies, or Arrival, we'll shove all those into one episode at the end. Uh, and we'll be doing commentary at some point in the near future as well to address the presidential election, the midpoint of the NFL season, and how the Rangers are dominating everyone in the fucking NHL right now. Um, did you see what happened the other night? It was, like, 7-2, and they beat the Canucks. Like, come on. Um, oh, I, didn't watch. I saw the score. I did not watch it. Like, I don't understand what's happening. So, uh, so we'll be back, uh, next week with, uh, crap, what did I just say? Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2. Yes. And not, we won't be doing a live episode next week. Uh, so if you are our listener who listens live, I apologize, but we will not be live next week because <laughs> it's Thanksgiving. Like, who the hell wants to do this on Thanksgiving? Like, come on. So, good night, and we'll be back then. Night.